Hey, how you doing there? I posted up a chart on the community board, and a lot of people wanted me to explain it. I thought even though there were single words, it was kind of uh, self-explicative. And uh, the most, what I've found, of course, this is my position. You can disagree with me all you like. The three most important words in life are diversification, redundancy, and, of course, wisdom. I said the first two are important for uh, a successful life. And, and by success, I don't necessarily mean becoming rich, and I certainly don't mean becoming famous. I don't hold that as any form of goal. And the last, of course, being wisdom. And not only is it apropos that uh, these, from my position, okay, um, the most important things in life, but also, too, this was the very thing that was never taught to me in high school or college. I actually went to a good... Well, you'd say public school system. When we say good, it's kind of like the, the less rottenest of all the tomatoes. Public school system and teachers, I have no respect for 99.9% .9 of them. They're counterproductive. They're brainwashers. Uh, they fill your head with nonsense and jargon that the state and teachers unions wants to fill your head with. So I'm completely 100% completely opposed to the public school system. It creates uh, depressed little zombies and... Um, stressed out uh, people with uh, issues. Let's just use the word issues. So it's very apropos that this stuff was not taught, but in specifically defining these terms, let's uh, first start out with, of course, the first one, which is uh, diversification. Diversification, I'll give you an example of uh, where they shut down some, some uh, oil wildcatters and uh, like... Uh, the Keystone Pipeline, which I don't care what anybody's politics are one way or the other on that, I don't discuss politics, is that a lot of these people, that's all they've ever done in life, and they are in trouble because they're not diversified in the things that they can do in their life. Uh, being diversified means that uh, you're not traveling down a single path. You may have developed a, a super skill on uh, one particular aspect of uh, something, like an electrician. Of course, an electrician basically has a job for life, but it could be something uh, very uh, pronounced that uh, is cut off in the near future or sometime in the, the distant future. And, you know, what are you going to do? Being diversified in life and the things that you know, everything actually helps everything else. I've found this is true in uh, translation. The more uh, the ancient Greek I know, the more the poly I know. The more the poly I know, the more the ancient Greek I know. Because all of these things, nothing is known th except through the modality of the knower, are self-supportive. They're not, well, this is poly and ancient India stuff over here, and this is Greek stuff over here. It's completely ridiculous. When it comes to monistic monism, they are all one and the same thing. They're just, one's a Greek flavor and the other one's an Indian flavor or an Egyptian flavor. So being diversified, and there's another example of diversification. There's literally a thousand plus, a million uh, as, uh, aspects or facets of how diversification is so, so incredibly helpful in life. I mean, I cannot think of a single aspect of life where diversification is not important. Um, if someone has a regular job, some people make a killing, not literally, you know, a killing at a second job because they know an enormous amount of about something. It could be land. Uh, I've done a lot, a lot of research over uh, decades on uh, raw land. I don't do houses and stuff like that. And uh, I don't have money to invest in raw land. However, I have bought you know a couple pieces in the past few years by selling most of the stuff that I have. I've never, ever made a bad choice on land. So when one avenue is cut off or one avenue dwindles, not necessarily cut off, you could amplify it on another channel of what you truly know and are good at. And uh, being diversified in what I know, also too in what I can make, uh, leather work, because right now I'm working twice as hard to make half as much, seemingly so, and there's a lot of bad stuff that's happened in the world. But that just means I amp it up in the different channels of my life that I'm diversified in. You know, I'm an author, I can do leather work and make cool stuff. 
You know, I can say I can make my own clothing, and I've proven that I can make my own clothing. You may not like the way it looks, because it's leather. Especially in the summertime, leather wear is not, you know, not that desirable unless you're a motorcycle, uh, motorcycle cyclist or something. Um, but I can make my own clothing, and I can fix things and do things, and I know things. So this kind of is an encompassing word of diversification and why uh, diversification is so incredibly important. And of course, you hear this stuff in a TV commercial too. You need to have a diversified portfolio. Well, why do you need to have a diverse, and I don't know the stock market, I don't claim to be a stock trader or anything like that, but I mean, I know what it means. It means you, know, you put too many eggs in one basket, you're up the creek without a paddle. It's like, I got all my eggs in one basket, boom. Oh my God. You need to have other avenues, you know. If you only got one bridge, in your life, that's a problem. Well, in case the bridge burns or the bridge wears out, you know, if you have other bridges, other avenues in your life, so this is what diversification means in relationship to what I, uh, giving it context to, so far as its importance in life. Uh, the second one is redundancy. I've written an article for Apple, to tech support for Apple. It's called uh, Methodology to Protect Your Data. And it's not just about data, it's about everything. Of course, you don't have a redundancy for your heart, right? Unless you're like a mega millionaire or something, you have like a spare heart on call or something. I guess people like that might have that. You know, so there are things that you don't have redundancy for. That's why, of course, you need to be healthy, which, of course, I'm no example of that whatsoever. And I don't claim to be. But uh, redundancy for things in life, because things are going to fail. Um, redundancy of where you could go to in case something gets bad. You know, um, a place to retreat to which I do. I have my cabin in the woods. I've uh, made the important things in life to the best of my ability, and I have no money at all to speak of, but I've made redundancy for the important things of life. Place to live, a roof over my head, place to grow food, um, redundancy for information. Uh, I said I've huge into data redundancy. People, I've spent decades collecting data and scanning stuff in. You know, if I didn't have redundancy and like the hard drive or solid state drive crashed or, you know, of course they suffer from bit rot, they all do. Without redundancy, I would lose decades of my work. I mean, who on earth wants to th throw away decades of their own life's work? Like, oh, I forgot, I didn't have multiple backups, didn't have redundancy. So when it comes to data and information, redundancy is God. Redundancy is always God. Um, someone got me addicted to watching this, uh, and I don't watch much TV, but I think it's funny as hell. It's called uh, Rick and Morty. <laughs> and I'll give you an example. Maybe a younger generation can relate to. And uh, there's infinite number of Ricks in the multiverse. And uh, there's literally millions and billions of them. And he calls himself the infinite Rick. Like if one of them dies, there's a billion more of them. So he considers himself a god because he's, he has extreme redundancy. You know, if one of them gets offed, who cares? There's a, there's a billion more where that came from. <laughs> so, redundancy is God. And uh, having backups and backups for backups. In every aspect of your life, you should have a backup and a backup to the backup. And there has never, ever been a downside to redundancy. There's just not. Someone might come up with a weird one that I haven't heard of, but uh, redundancy. So we have now uh, diversification and redundancy. The third, of course, is wisdom. And uh, I'll be brief on this one since I have so many thousands of videos on wisdom. When's the last time you heard somebody in public use the word wisdom? Never happens, does it? And yet it's what is most important. As far as all forms of uh, hardcore ancient monistic metaphysics, both Pythagorean, Indian, and otherwise, Adi Sankara, I don't want to talk about the various forms of monistic metaphysics, but wisdom is, of course, the transcendent self. Not the existential self, i.e. the psychophysical self, but the transcendent self. In other words, there's no distinction between the Atman or the soul and actual wisdom, because wisdom is to become self-proximal, okay? And there's no such thing, and I'll give you a crude analogy, there's no such thing as gold purification. We talk about purifying gold, right? This is actually real gold leaf over top of this plaster apple. But gold is never purified because gold is gold is gold. Gold is always gold. When we say gold purification, what we mean is extraction, okay? 
When people say gold purification, they just mean you're extracting it from other things that it's embedded in or amalgamated with, but you don't extract gold. It doesn't happen because gold is gold. And uh, self-extraction in regards to the transcendent self and uh, the liberation ontology thereof, wisdom in the transcendent self or the Atman, and all forms of monistic metaphysics speak of two self. The self, the psychophysical self and the transcendent self, wisdom and the self are one and the same thing. So this is the treasure, if you will, that is uh, for elevating oneself above this world and this life and also, too, uh, for that which is most important at the time of death. Because death is not the opposite of life. Uh, death is the opposite of birth. Life, technically, in the aspect of metaphysics, has no opposite. What's the opposite of life? Death. No, that's not the case. The opposite of death is uh, birth or conception. Life has no opposite. Life, by definition, is the consubstantiality of matter and spirit. So when people say the end of life, you know, the breakup or dissolution, the conjoinment of the psychophysical and uh, the transcendent self, that's life does not have an opposite. Well, what a break up, the breakup of the consubstantiality of those two. That's still not the opposite of life anyway. Um, so wisdom, of course, is for what is after and what is really, and I'm not talking about religion, okay? I don't care what people believe in. They believe in whatever they want to believe in. Wisdom is to become self-proximal and, of course, is synonymous with transcendence. There's this disobjectification methodology that one enjoins whereby which we pull ourselves back from materialism. Materialism, of course, is embodiment. Embodiment, of course, is to be amalgamed or dissolution, dis, uh, uh, um, dissolved into something. You know, take a drop of uh, bright red uh, dye, you know, drop it in a, a gallon jug, you'll see the bright red dye. You take a few drops of the red and put it in a thousand gallons of water, you won't see anything at all. It's so uh, diluted in the water. And transcendence, of course, is the extraction of that. The, uh, the consolidation, the amalgamation, uh, extraction of what is most important and what is transcendent to the psychophysical, such that it is self-reflexive. But I could drone on for hours on that topic, but anyway, that's what I mean by wisdom. Um, so when people ask me to explain why I consider those three things the most important, number one, no teacher ever taught you about those words. Guarantee you they didn't, nor their importance. And uh, it's my premise for what is most important in life and what is most important for this life and after the breakup of the psychophysical and uh, the true self, the conjoinment therein. People say, what happens at death? It's like, I don't know, what happens to the signal when you smash the radio? It's kind of a ludicrous question, but people don't think like that because they're not taught to think like that. Um, what about death? It's like, I don't know, what about the signal in relationship to the radio? What if the signal were sentient and it considers itself the radio that it sees in the mirror? That's me, that's who I am. You know, true suffering is the false identification with that psychophysical heap. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, that is what I meant when I wrote the three words, diversification, redundancy, and wisdom on uh, the community board that I, since a lot of people ask me that, to explain that, there's the explanation. In short, that was meant to be a short explanation. It probably wasn't short, but some things take a little bit longer to explain. I hope I cleared that up. Lux Everitas. Have a great week.